Hey guys, yes, Ian, uh, Benjamin, and I'm Reshem, Reshem Arden, and uh, is that right? Is that correct pronunciation? Uh, Arden's fine, Reshem Arden. Arden. Reshem Arden. It's quite, quite posh, actually, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's, so, very posh. it's like, like Elizabeth Arden, but Reshem Arden. <laughs> oh, there we go, there we go, <laughs> yes, indeed, indeed. That's my makeup that I use, you know what I mean? That's how to know, honestly, I'm delighted uh, that Reshem is with me today, uh, Digital Hub, and um, so Reshem, how are you? How are you getting on? How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having me, Ian. No, it's obviously not the pleasure. It's all mine. So, so yeah, tell everyone, we've got a growing base of listeners and viewers on YouTube. So, top level, give us a bit of um, the introductions to, to Russian, who you are, what makes you tick, etc., where you're from, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, sure. So, hi, everyone. I'm Reshim Arden. I am currently, career-wise, I'm a transformation and performance manager at Sky Media. And I've been there for about uh, five and a half years now. Um, outside of work, I am a single mum. I've got two kids. My daughter, Shree's 14. My son, Dylan, is nine. Um, so, yeah, it's full on. Um, in my spare time, I've got a podcast as well. Um, so, Like Attracts Like, Ian. So, but um, my podcast is all about well-being. So, you know, as the conversation flows, I think the common theme you'll notice is I really care about people and their well-being. So I ended up sort of journey of just this year launched a podcast called Now I Know. So it's all about well-being topics and trying to break the stigma about mental health. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a big believer of if my people are happy and healthy, then they'll perform. So that's sort of like my base foundation with whenever I work with people. Super. Fantastic. Fantastic. Wonderful stuff. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Brilliant. We've got some lovely topics there for um, to, to unravel and unpack, which is good. So um, from memory, doing a little bit more research. So you you, you were raised in, in around Hounslow, Middlesex, down neck of the woods, is that right? Yes, yes. I'm um, born and bred West London. Um, so that's why I love work at Sky Media because it's literally down the road for oh, me. Yeah, like, so you're still there then to this day then? You're still living like. Yeah, yeah. so Austin. my mum and dad uh, live in Heston, in how, you know, right near Heathrow. I went to Heston School. Um, so um, it's quite funny being at Sky Media because half the people are like, oh, you must know my mum or my dad. You know, that's because like, of the age difference. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, West London, born and bred. Fantastic. So like big family, brothers and sisters, siblings. Yeah. yeah, so I've got uh, one brother who's older than me, um, yeah. and then I've got a sister, where, and we've got a 21-year age gap. Wow. So, yeah. Well, you're the, well, the oldest of the two sisters. Uh, but I'm the, I'm, yeah, so I'm the middle sister, and then I've got my little sister. But um, when I went to university, my mum and dad surprised us with a baby. Wow, got and, busy. Uh, got jiggy with it <laughs> when you're at uni. Yeah, so we and my brother at university, so I went to Nottingham Trent University. My brother was right. at Bristol. Um, and the mum and dad one day said, hey, by the way, we're having a baby. And I was just like, I was actually really happy because I always wanted like another sibling. Yeah. Um, and we weren't at that age where we were like, oh, mom, dad, you know, we were all like in our 20s. And we were like, this is amazing. So Unbelievable. You, yeah. Fantastic. yeah. If you saw me when I was younger, you'd think like my sister was my baby and then my mum was the grandma. But as we got older, like me and my sister are more like sisters rather than... Gotcha. You know, it's incredible, that's yeah, really amazing because I'm, I'm the youngest. I'd love to have a younger sibling. Do you know I mean, I'm the youngest of two, yeah. Um, so that's that's amazing, fantastic. So you, you're still pretty close with your sister, even though there's an age gap or whatever. So you know, yeah, really close. Like, we chat all the time, like, we bounce off each other. We're both procrastinators, right? So when we've got a decision to make, we're like phoning each other up, like, I've got a decision, like, what do you think? You know, we're like, <laughs> we're superb. like that, superb, superb. So, I mean, look, I'm obviously West Indian Caribbean heritage. Uh, born in Bedfordshire, Luton boy, raised in Luton, a uh, very, very multicultural town. And uh, so I know how it was in Hounslow, that neck of the woods as well, very, very multicultural. And it was, for my upbringing, work hard. It wasn't work hard, play hard. It was work hard, work hard. And uh, was it the same with you as well, in terms of your family upbringing, work hard, work yeah. hard? Yeah. You know, obviously, my, you know, I, um, I'm Sikh. You know, my parents were sort of, we were both, my, my grandparents from India, and then my grandparents moved to Kenya back in the day right okay so my my parents were born and bred in Kenya um and then when they got married they came to the UK because they were like we want to raise our kids in you know the UK um so yeah right. so my I was born all my cousins, all my generation were born in you know um the UK uh, but my family typical Sikh family you know Asian family you know doctor lawyer accountant is the yeah. way to go um, I wasn't academic. I really, really? struggled at school. Yeah, oh, no, really, that really surprises me. Yeah, I, I was very shy. I was very quiet. I struggled to speak. 
you know, so it's very different to what I'm, I'm now. Yeah. But, you know, this is, and this is why I love doing talks at Sky because I'm like, I was like you as well. So if I can do it, you can do it, you know. Okay. Um, but yeah, I didn't, I, I, you know, I wanted to do law to please my parents. And then I did not get the grades. And then in those days, it was like business was the thing to do. Um, so Nottingham Trent said to me, Look, obviously you didn't get the grades for law, but what would you like to do? And I was like, I'll do business. Right. So I did that for a year, um, about a year at, um, I was at Nottingham Trent. I didn't really like it, Nottingham. I was actually missing my family. Really? Um, and then obviously my mum surprised us with a baby. Yeah. And I was like, I don't really want to, like my, my sister to think I'm just the aunt that comes over every other weekend, you know? <laughs> um, so I decided to move to London back home. Um, and my mum and dad actually, Wait, so you, you, you didn't finish university you didn't finish you didn't finish it I just changed the course oh did so you? I just, okay yes yeah, so they let me change the course which was really great but you know my mum and dad uh, looking back at it I was really fortunate because my parents were very liberal so you know how lots of people in my background would want to move out to have a, the, the life of university life but yeah, my parents yeah. always let me and my brother just go out so I didn't need to live out you know right. so I decided to live at home with mum and dad you know just be there with my sister as well um, was, so yeah, because that's, that's miles away from. from so that one, I lived out for a year. I lived in Nottingham, um, right. and it I was mean, really—it's actually nice to just see a different city. Yeah, it's you a great know. city as well. We've been there a few times, and um, so so. You, but you've done the, like the four years there, right? But you did. But you done the three. No, I just the, did the one year. I just didn't oh, like the course. Done one um, year. That was it. In the, in yeah, the, in the business it. analysis was it business analysis? Yeah. Right. So they said I could just do that in. Um, I did it in University of North London. Right. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Right, super. Yeah. So, so yeah, that. that was lovely. Just sort of, but while I was, um, you know, back in the day, you know, like you had to study and work, have a Saturday job or an evening job. Mm. So I was always used to like, I would, you know, study, but then I'd work at Debenhams in Hounsley High Street, you know, for a bit of money because you know that generation of parents they had enough to pay our bills, but if you wanted the nice trainers and the nice sportswear, you had to go and get a job. Hundred you know? percent, I'm the same here. Yeah, my mum and dad as well. Yeah, totally. Nothing was. Yeah, good. so like you say, work hard, work harder. It was work hard at uni and then go and get a job as well if you want the nice <laughs> things. You know. Totally, um. Totally. So yeah. So that was, and that's, and that's when um, I sort okay. of came back and you know got a, back in West London, just got the tube from Osterley to North London on the Piccadilly line. You know. Gotcha. Did that, graduated, and then, yeah, then yeah, started so my career I mean, journey. You graduated, I mean, so you graduated, obviously, business decision analysis, and then you chose media, and that was the, the first option was Teletext, right? Yeah. So uh, how did that come about? Tell us, I mean, I mean, for our younger viewers, you might even think, what's Teletext? What's that? Is that about texting on your phone? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> Teletext was on, was on TV uh, back in the day, and I used to use it when I was going away on holiday with my mates. We'd go on Teletext and try and choose a cheap holiday and hope that it was legit, which it was. And then we would fly off to Magaloo for wherever it was for two weeks. But it was like holiday was a massive part of what Teletext was about. It was like a, an information service on TV, like channel, I don't know what it was, you know what I mean? That's when there was only about yeah. five channels on TV, then you'd hit a special button on a remote control and it would take you to this teletext feed which was like all big blocked writing so if anyone that doesn't know what i mean google teletext and hit images and you'll see what i'm talking about but, yeah. but um but yeah so so cool so how did that happen teletext i mean that was how did so that, that was not my plan um like those like most people in media we you just sort of fall into it so what happened for me was i finished university like majority of people you get your degree you actually don't know what you want to do yeah you know yeah, so because I had a Saturday job I had a friend who worked at an agency in Hounslow High Street it was called Peach Peach Agency I don't know if they're still around I think well, they still are an, an agency yeah no they were just like an agency that were oh, like recruitment agency, you mean? yeah just recruitment agency right, and they were okay. like you know day jobs 10 pound an hour right yeah, yeah, copying yeah. filing you yeah, know yeah, that yeah. hard work ethic I'd call them I'm free you know and they would call me and say Resh you know they would get a call on the day say, could you get somewhere in an hour and you'll get £10 an hour to just to stack boxes or file or photocopy, you yeah, know, it was yeah, that yeah. sort of job. But you know that hard work ethic? I, I was like, yeah, sure. All I thought was £10 an hour, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, do you it, know? whatever. Um, so I kept doing it. And what I noticed, I said this on another podcast, is I noticed that I used to really watch how people were treated at these companies. Because I was like this high performer, I would do the job they wanted. They said it was a day job and I'd do it in like a few hours. And they were like, oh my God, you're really amazing, Gresham. Would you like a job here? And majority of the time I'd be like, no, thank you. 
<laughs> you know, because I see how you treat your people, you know. Um, oh, so, right. look, so looking back, I think culture was more the thing that was going to sell me, not a title or a job or a company. Um, right. So what happened was the recruitment agency were like, Resh, you know, you've been temping for like six months. Do you not want to get a, like a permanent job? Um, and I said, I do, but I'm just really fussy. I don't know what to do. And they and the girl who was my recruitment, my recruiter, she was also went to school with me. Right. And I used to organize events at school. And she was like, I know you're great at events. There's a company called Teletext. They need a PA to um, launch their 10 year anniversary party at the Natural History Museum. And me being wow. on events, I was like, yeah, let's do it. So it was great. Went in, got the job. Um, my first yeah. job was to organize job an event. Right, like one interview, just smashed it. Uh, so yeah, one interview. It was just like, because it was just, I think for them it was an easy one. Can you just organize an event for us? Yes. So I went in. That was a permanent, um, that was a permanent job though. It was a permanent position. It was yeah. permanent, yeah. Um, so I was like an assistant to the PA. And right. her task was organizing events. So I did it. It was great. Loved it. The people were amazing. But when that event was over, the only jobs I was getting was like from the, the PA was like, can you stick labels on these envelopes? Can you? Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. I was, it, yeah, was it permanent? Yeah. Thought, well, you know. Yeah. And then I was a bit like, mate, I've got a degree. I'm not, I haven't come here to put labels on envelopes. Like I'm, I'm, I've got more to give. 100%. Um, and, you know, back in the day, there was no flexible working, right? So if you were bored, you just had to sit on your chair till 5.30. You couldn't just walk out. Mm. So I used to fill my time, being that hardworking ethic, I used to fill my time with, go up to people say, oh, what do you do? Can you show me what you do for a living? You know, and they would basically let me sit with them. I would chatter them. And I slowly picked up their job. And then one guy, I remember his name, his name was Gareth. And he said, Fresh, I'm leaving. You're really good at like picking things up why don't you see if you can just go for my job what was this what was like, job what was he doing it was like um it was called um like a sales assistant so basically sales would sell the lego writing advertising on the teletext tv yeah and we just had to book it into a system like a bit like here's the form you know back in the day faxes yeah. would come in you yeah, know yeah yeah oh my gosh so you <laughs> would just put it was really easy like you know um, and i'll just do it it was really easy so i basically because it was a small company, everyone knew everyone, you'd get for drinks, you'd your Friday night drinks. And I knew the MD, I knew, um, she, she she's amazing now. She basically works for Google now, Nishma Patel. She's part of MIFA as well. Um, and well, I she, basically- well, She owns Teletext? She was the MD of, uh, I think she was MD of Teletext at the time. Wow, really? Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. She was amazing. She was like this Asian female role model, like amongst all the white people, you, you know, she was heading it all. She was like so inspirational. Yeah, I bet. Um, and she was also lovely, you know, she'd come to the drinks with everybody, she knew everybody. And I just said, look, Gareth's leaving. Um, you know, your PA, she doesn't really need an assistant. So you can save a headcount there. Move me into it. And move me, you know, and you save on recruitment fees, you know, all this stuff and tiring and all that time. And she was amazing. She was like, yeah, let's do it. So it. my career started from there, just learned being a sales assistant and advertising and you know, um, and then, yeah, the rest is all history. Now right, that's okay, my cool. media. So, so, so that hard work ethic, I mean, obviously just go back a little bit, uh, take a couple of steps back. So uh, again, heritage, et cetera, mum and dad, they both worked really hard, didn't they? So, I mean, yeah. I, my folks worked at Vauxhall. What did your, what did your mum and dad do? What, what's all so wrong? my mum, throughout, from all the time she's worked, she worked for the job centre in Hounslow High Street. So she was doing all, all the admin in the, you know, getting right. him on a job. So my mum's always had that same job. My dad was for years, worked for an old school company as an engineer called Fidelity. I don't remember back in the day, oh, yeah, Amstrad company. Fidelity. Yeah, they would fix all the, the parts in the TV. That's right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he got, when he got made redundant, he got hit quite hard because that, you know, his skill set was engineering and they didn't need those people anymore. So my dad went through a lot of struggles trying to find a job. But right now he's um, a supporting police officer at Heathrow oh, Airport. He? Okay, good stuff. So you've yeah. been like, back to the so, community or something like that. But, yeah, that but, yeah, so, but definitely that work hard ethic comes from there. I mean, you can see it. Your mum doing that every day, your dad, you know. So, so yeah, you, you kind of look and see what they did and kind of rubs off on you. And I think coming from a, an, an ethic background, you've got that. To have that, well, I think every parent um, from an ethic background instills that in their children. Do you know what I mean? You know, yeah. Uh, so yeah, excellent. Okay, cool, fantastic. So, so tell us that. So you kicked off working in that role uh, that Gareth left. You took over sales assistant, blah blah blah, using using PayPal and 
fax machines <laughs> yeah. to get things done. Um, so that kind of gave you the first sort of exposure from the client side as well, client interaction. Um, and then, so what happened there? How long were you there for in the enemy? I, I do... So I was at, in total, I was at Teletext for five years, but I had different okay. jobs there. I think I got promoted every single year. Okay. To um, So I went from an assistant, then I went from an exec, then I went to manager. Okay. Um, very, very like quickly. Um, that's a mixture of both. They they knew my talent, but also sales was you know there's high turnover in sales as well, just generally. Yeah, there um, is, always. But my manager was great because uh, one thing I'm looking back at my career journey, I'm very good at training people. Um, so I would be like you know the new person will come in and I'll show them how to do things and this is the way this is the policy the process. So I was very good with people and connecting and training individuals. So I rose up very well because I I also would. You know, one thing I've noticed as well, what I would do is while I was learning something, I would always say, like, why do you do that when you can do that? Oh, you know? right. Kind of like refine the process. Yeah. So I met, I ended up being like this process of improvement type person as well as just doing the job. So okay. I was always trying to find a solution or is there a better way we can do something? And they really embraced that at Teletext. They loved it. Um, awesome. So awesome. I was really able to use that skill and just make things better. Superb. So we we, um, we we also, because it had a bit of a sales element to it, it's just out of interest to me because I started out in advertising sales before I got into recruitment in a few years. And so did you ever get involved in like training and managing the sales team? Was that part um, of No, so part? I was mainly supporting the sales guys. Okay. So they would mainly be out and they'd come in. Um, so I didn't have to train them. There. Yeah, they would be like, Resh, you know, we've got some work. You know, we had all these deadlines with TV, like by three o'clock we need this live and it was that sort of right. stuff. So we were like the elves in the office getting the work done while they were yeah. out. While well, they're getting the deals done. Okay, gotcha, superb. Okay, brilliant, fantastic. So then from there, where did you kind of go from there? So next, the next move from memory? Yes, so from there I got made redundant and yeah. um, I got... Um, approached by a recruitment play website called monster.co.uk back in the day yeah, um, yeah. and they approached me and they said we've seen your cv we've got a job for you at wall street journal based in covent garden and and i said well i've got no digital experience because it was for the di it was for so you know wall street journal is a newspaper an american newspaper yeah. so and the they yeah it was the online version and they were launching like the Euro european edition um, and I said, look, I have never done digital, but I'm a quick learner um, and I will pick things up really quickly. You know, just just give me the opportunity. He's like, absolutely. So I went there. I did the interview and I was honest with them. I said, look, these these are my strengths. Um, I cannot do digital, but I'm happy to learn it. Like you you tell me what you need. And mm. I'm a really quick learner. I'm great with systems. Da, da, da. Um, and yeah, they were they gave me a chance. Um, I had about two interviews there. They gave me a chance. And basically, they said to me, look, you're just your energy. We just love you. you. You could just tell. And they also said to me, it was also like you interviewed us as well. Like, not do we want Russian, but does Russian want Wall Street Journal? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I told all my candidates, it's a two-way street. You know, it's got to be right for them as well as right for the employer. So that's good, you know, that you've got that. Instinct, yeah. Instinct, instinct. And I think they were the, they coached me and mentored me in such a rigid, like regimental military style operation that, it helped with just everything I did from then on in terms really? of going into companies and making sure everyone's doing the right thing. Gotcha. Um, so this is the American way of doing things. So they had like the same sort of... They are so strict. Yeah. So cutthroat. So like if, it, if it's not even... If this is not even booked in the right way, it's not even going to go live. Whereas in the UK, it's a bit like, oh, we'll, we'll make it happen. We'll get it live and we'll figure it out later. They were like, if it doesn't do ABC, it's not going live. I don't care. Right, gotcha. you know, don't talk to me. You know, it was like <laughs> that. So, um, Get it done properly, sort of scenario. Yeah, but when I was at Wall Street Journal, I absolutely loved it. Covent Garden, City Live, yeah. loved it. Um, pay was amazing. American company smashed like money wise was amazing for me. Um, but then I had my first daughter. I had my first child. Um, yep. and I didn't like the commute to Covent Garden. Um, I didn't like the hours because being an American company. A lot of their, so we were sales support in the UK, but to get things done, their team was in the US and they didn't care we were in London. So to get things done, you were logging on at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, working late, like five hours behind, right? Yeah. yeah. And then I was just like, and I remember one day my daughter was in bed. I didn't mind it because my daughter was in bed and I used to do it at night when she was asleep. And I remember one day she was crying and I said, one second, I need to go and see my daughter. And they were like, no, we need to deal with this. And I was like, nah mate yeah, like yeah, my yeah. family come first yeah, like, you can't even let me go and see to my daughter this isn't for me so 
um uh, that was the tipping point it was like i need to leave and find something else gotcha. you know? but you're there for quite a while though so i mean and that whole digital area was everything that went from being on print um online um i remember that journey because i was in print magazine sales and everything went online and that's when i got into recruitment actually because no one knew what they were doing it was all kind of unbroken down fragmented but by the time you got into um wall street journal I think there was like cost per thousand CPMs and that started to come into play. So people knew how to measure advertising. But, but when it first kicked off, no one knew what they were doing. It was a nightmare. Um, so, so so you kind of learn that digital journey, as it were, from the ad side. An ad comes in and it's going to go through, blah, 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 et cetera. And that whole digital transformation from an ad perspective. And then and you liked it, even though the, the role wasn't right, the culture of the company wasn't right. But do you think that during that period that you felt that oh my gosh i like media this is where i want to be i get this and you can see the future for you in yeah that, in that sector yeah i i enjoyed it because it's so agile like you're constantly changing constantly evolving it's not the same thing was teletext was very tv and it was very like the same thing because you got bored mm. so with um you know at the end of the day the, the objectives were the same that like delivering a campaign and make sure we've you know de delivered all the impressions but each yeah. client was different, each, you know, agency was different, you know, and they had a really great culture of like taking us out and rewarding us when we did well. And gotcha. for me, that was what I really enjoyed was the social element, you know, the people. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also because I had a family, you know, with digital, you can work remotely, you can do things any time of the day, as long as it gets delivered by the end, you gotcha. know. Gotcha. So and then did you develop um more skills and become more confident to kind of like grow senior in terms of senior management perspective in that role do you know what I mean you... um I was a lot I wasn't that confident there because I was still learning but it's when I left yeah. and I realized what I'd got under my belt that gave me the confidence like at BBC so right, when I went there that. yeah um, so like around 2013 yeah do you have a couple of years out to kind of yeah, no, so why, um, yeah, so I was, you know, had my mat leave with, you know, my daughter, but a lot of people from Wall Street Journal had gone to bbc.com. Oh, really? Um, so I just was like, you know, guys, I really, you know, you know, I always kept in touch with my work colleagues and I said, look, I've had a baby. Where can I go? That's a bit more fr family friendly. I can, you know, do a drop off and a pick up. And they all said to me, come to BBC. Gotcha. Um, okay. And because so, so then. Going there, or did you just apply and say, look, I'm available? Uh, yeah I just kept you... looking on their website like just kept looking and then there was a role for a sales planner right um, perfect perfect and so I went for that because also I, I was then uh, when I got married I moved to Hayes so I, I'm, a, I'm divorced now but when I got married uh, we moved to Hayes which I'm still here now but it was easy commute because I would just get the train from Hayes to like um, Shepherd's Bush uh, like right. in Broadway and move so yeah, it, was, yeah, definitely. it was easier so um no it was great so I went there as a sales planner and you know when you see great you talk about great leaders I was so fortunate at BBC because I went in to look after the London agency sales guys so they would be out the, the my, my my job was while they're out you know trying to get the revenue they'd phone me and say Resh we've got like you know 500k what can we do with it and then it was my job to sort of put something a brief together Right. You know, a campaign so you on this website put you here da, 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 rah, rah, you get this many clicks and all that stuff. yeah this is the budget these are your options yeah. so i was like that and what happened was i used to sit near the senior lady called carolyn gibson um she's now left i think she's at euro news or something like that but yeah she sat next to me and she said you are like what did she say she said you are highly qualified or overqualified for the job you're doing and wow. that was all my um, training from the Wall Street Journal, you know. And she said to me, and I said to her, yeah, I know. But I said, I need, I did that sort of sideways downward step because I just yeah. needed to be around my daughter, you know. But mm. what was nice was she said, no, she goes, how do you feel about like training a team and like building a team and teaching them what you know so you do but you teach them so wow so what was her role then carol carol she was he saw she was um was she md at the time of being oh, right. yeah yeah, um, yeah i'd sit near her you know and you know I, I do this in my talks i say to people like my dad said to me whether you're the cleaner or the md you treat everyone the same with respect yeah, so 100%. even in the workplace i could talk to a senior leader where someone would go to me how do you talk to that person? They're a leader, and how do you do it, Rachel? Like, but they're just people, yeah, you know. Right. 
So whereas there would be a spare desk next to the senior leadership, I'd go and sit there. Right. Good for you. Yeah. 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 I'm with you. And, with you. and this is what I say to people that I mentor, like, just that they're just normal people and they're just they'd love to like have a catch up with you don't feel like they're untouchables and Superior we can't and... Talk to them. yeah you know mm. um so yeah so she was amazing and she basically said can you roll out what you do and but if it, so bbc.com were a bit like a startup when i joined and she said we just need to get them to the next level so i basically had to implement um processes as part of my job i had to train people i had to show sales how to sell stuff because i was like no guys you, you're not selling this correctly this is how you sell right. well, I, that's what I thought earlier you see you know what i mean that you might have had to do that you know yeah um, so then it just became that part of my thing like people i became the go-to person which i've got this question what what do you think they understood that wall street journal were like 10 years ahead of us and how do we get there you know so i was very fortunate and this is why i feel like redundancy is all i see it as a blessing because if I wasn't maybe done it from Teletext, I would not have gained all these skills at this other company. I wouldn't have left. You right. know, I didn't realize you. I thought you'd left Teletext. I didn't realize you made redundant from there. Yeah, I got made redundant, oh, and um, um, and to be honest with you, it was that was a blessing being made redundant because I was you in the process of house. looking for a house, and uh, you know, I went from looking from for one bridge and flats to then being able to afford a house. You know, so gotcha. it was a blessing. You gotcha. know, so you're perfect, fantastic. So, so Carolyn Gibson, she's uh, you owe a lot to her to kind of giving you that autonomy to kind of grow. Absolutely. Um, Put together the training and development for other people within within the BBC, which which is amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so you kind of like flourish in that role, and that gave you the confidence to kind of like. Digital Hub is sponsored by Digital Execs, which is www.digitalexecs.com. Digital recruitment um, business that is headed up by myself, Ian Benjamin. Digital Execs makes it possible for the Digital Hub podcast to be published. So if you'd like to support us and to help us keep putting this content out there, we love putting content out there that is inspirational, uh, content that takes the spotlight off of recruitment from my perspective for a while and shines the spotlight on in influential, inspirational <laughs> individuals from in and around the digital sector uh, that can add value to, to your lives and really, really interesting stories. We like to lift the bonnet up uh, of these individuals' lives to understand what makes them tick and to, to share those insights directly with you. So, um, and if you are looking for a new digital um, opportunity, please get in touch with us. Um, you can follow me directly on Instagram, it's Ian Benjamin or Digital Execs. Um, again, on LinkedIn, Ian Benjamin or Digital Execs. I just want to say thank you for all your support. Really appreciate it grow your wings as it were yeah yeah and then what happened was when I got there the finance team said to me Resham since you've joined the you know the London agency team there's the invoice queries have reduced you know because that's part of the job where I'm making sure people are paying the bills mm. and they said to me what are you doing so I showed them I said oh I've implemented all of these processes for sales and they said to me could you roll out what you do across America and APAC the US and APAC and I said um not really because I'm my remit is EMEA, you know, Europe, Mr. Middle East and Africa. I yeah. can't tell the US and Asia what to do. And then I said, what you can do is create a role for me, which is global. And then I can do it. And um, so they said, okay, what would it look like? So I wrote a job description called Global Process and Policy Manager. Right. And then they had to get, it just went for the, the, the sign off. And then like, yeah, they sold it. And so I became Global Process Manager. What I was then doing was, um, I no longer had to manage my team because they were really great. They just got on with it. I was just there as a consultant for them if they're an advisor. Um, and so when my day was basically like, I'd come in, I'd drop my um, daughter to school. I would come in. I would focus on, um, you know, the morning was like Singapore, Japan would call me for any issues they had. Right. And then my lunchtime was like looking after Paris and Dubai. And then I would look after London. And then when I would go home after the school run, I would look after the US. So I'd sort of manage right. my day, like like time zones. Gotcha. Gotcha. Fantastic. And I saw the benefit there as well in terms of like less invoicing queries as well. So what was yeah. it? What did you change then? What did you kind of like? Can you remember what it was? Um, <clears throat> so I would just implement stuff like a template of how sales need to enter the things that operations need, you know, because everything's in emails and it's not consistent. So I had to get consistency 
on the platform, on the process, to, on, yeah. on, on the system to kind of like to make it. Yeah. You know, so it's like if you want to book an, a piece of advertising, you fill out this form. Right. You know. Okay. Obviously, so salespeople. Yeah, salespeople don't like admin. You no. know. Um, but because I'm, I've got a great relationship with people. They understood the benefit. It's like look, we'll get it live quicker. We'll get delivered to what they're asking for. Invoice queries are reduced. You know, it was just that influence of getting buy-in from people. I yeah, sort yeah, of learned at BBC. Yeah. Always a way to sell people. I mean, you know, just really, really poor admin. And uh, it's the way it goes. It's the way it goes. Fantastic. So it just keeps going. So, I mean, and then, so obviously, that you were there for like three years, nearly four years. No. Yeah. Uh, so um, I was there for about, again, about five years. So different roles again. Oh, like I went, I went from sort of C, uh, sales planner to senior planner, then global process manager. Um, and then I had my son. Right. And they were doing a round of redundancies and I was just a bit like, I'm knackered. I've got two kids. This little boy is like draining me, like bring on the redundancy. Um, so yeah, I took redundancy from BBC and I just was like, I just want to be a mum now. I don't really want to work, you know? So I figured out, uh, you know, I had about six months in terms of money to just figure out what I want to do. You know, I knew I didn't want to get a train. I definitely wanted to work. I didn't want to get a train into work. I wanted to be able to drive somewhere. So I was looking at, because I'm based in West London, I was looking at like O2 in Slough, Adobe right. in Stockley Park, Apple, you know, all these companies. Yeah. And then um, a friend of mine said to me, she's a designer. She was designing the interior of Sky Media. Oh, okay. She interior said to me, did, did you know that Sky Media are behind Ostley Tesco? And I was like, what? What do you mean? What's behind Tesco? Like I go to Tesco all the time. I didn't know there was a company behind there. It was ridiculous um and she said yeah there's a job but there's sky media and they're all about flexible working they've shut down their victoria office they're doing a lot of hybrid and so it might be good for you rash why don't you try it so i said okay so i basically um kept looking at the jobs for jobs at sky media and there was a job for an inventory manager for ad smart which is part of sky media and uh the, rec the recruitment lady said to me just go for it even though you're not great with excel and numbers just go for it you know how you know just see things yeah. so i went in and i just said to them how much of this inventory manager job am i going to be running reports in excel because at bbc i was able to hire someone to do the number crunching for me i just presented right. the numbers and they said to me no the um 90 of your job will be in the numbers and i just said look Thank you, but no, thank you. It's not yeah. for me. Um, and I said, so I don't want to waste your time. And this guy, his name is Graham Hutch. He's still at Sky Media now. He's um, one of the directors for digital. He said to me, so what is you? What do you like? And I said, I'm all about people, process, transformation, change. He said, okay, I know someone that needs you. He goes, can you just like bear with me? I was like, oh, thank you. So I'm really grateful to Graham Hutch because he didn't just go, no, not suitable. He was like, Ask the question, what what are your strengths? What do you want? Yeah. And then he was like, you know, so he like matched you with someone that needed me. Gotcha. He, he saw that what you could do and how where your school's gonna align with yeah. another department, as it were. And not a lot of people do that. Yeah. And I'm very grateful for him for doing that, you know. Um, because recruit recruiters, I had a nightmare with recruiters because they just kept going. I said like, I was a manager, I want to go a manager role. They'll just go, You've been out of media for about it was about a year, you yeah, two years by them. And they're like, you can't go back in there. You've got to start as an assistant. I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I, I'm a manager. I'm worthy of that. I'm not going to go down. Yeah, um, so, yeah, he was amazing. Then he got me in touch with um, my current boss, Martin Leach. And he just said, Martin, you've got to meet Resham. You want to transform your operations team. She's got a great experience. So I went, had a catch up with Martin. And he said to me, look, I don't have a head count right now. So I need to figure this out, how we're going to do it. But I do need mm. to bring someone externally because I can't get anyone internally to do the things I need doing. So I said, okay, fine. One month, one month went by, another month went by. Then it was like six months and the kids had had their school holidays. So I found him out. I said, Martin, how's it going? Like, I need to get out and work now. I can't stay at home. Yeah. I said to him, he said, I'm still trying to fight for head count. I said, listen, can you bring me in as a contractor? Give me a three month contract. I prove to you what I can do. And also I can see if I really want Sky Media. Yeah, I'm quite right. fussy with where I work. Street. Yeah. So he said, okay, that's, let's do that. So I was on a day rate for about three months. And I basically started, he said to me, I'm going to give you my team with the lowest people satisfaction score. And your job will be to increase that. I said, okay, fine. So I went into this team. They were very nervous. Like, yeah, they just were like, you know, 
I just said, look, what if I had a magic wand, what would you want to change or improve at Sky Media? That was my question. And quite a few people were really open to change. A lot of it was just people stuff. So what were like, they? What, what, what were those people doing? What was their job or what department were they in? So this was, um, they're called, so my title there was VOD Operations. So the video in demand that you see on Sky. Yeah. So when you watch any catch up, you know, yeah. content, the adverts that play out then, that was the team I was managing. Um, and their stuff wasn't even really work stuff. It was like stuff like we've moved from Victoria to Sky Media in Osterley. We've got nowhere to sit. We don't know people. Um, we want some training. We want to be developed. So it was more people development stuff. Right. You know? Interesting. Um, we want recognition. We want. We don't want to be micromanaged. We want autonomy. You know, it was those mm. sorts of things. So half the team spoke to me. The other half didn't want to speak to me because they were like, "Who's this Russian coming in telling us this?" Yeah. So some people rejected my invite. Some people accepted it. And then the people after about two three weeks. One of these guys, he said to me, can I speak to you, Reshim? And I said, no problem, but you didn't want to speak to me before. What's changed? And he said, you've only been here three weeks and so much has transformed. And mm. I can see that you're you're putting action into your words. You know? So you're going, was you acting like as a conduit middle person in between them and the senior management? Yeah. Putting a process in place and both of them had to buy into it. But he managed to yeah. implement that within a short space of time. So the results yeah. were visible Spot on. superb superb yeah well so there was one you are the transformation yeah powerhouse so, as you are oh thank you i love that i'm gonna put my cv powerhouse <laughs> transformation um, powerhouse definitely but what they did was you know because i then so imagine so the board operations team were the lowest happiest team the, low, the, the saddest team, let's say. And then after a year, they became the highest scoring operations team. Wow, wow. So from, that, so from then, the How other operations people? teams, um, nine people. Right, okay, brilliant. Well done. So the um, rest of the operations team approached me and said, what are you doing, Reshim? What are you doing? Like, how teach me what you do, because then we can do it. And I then ended up spending a lot of time coaching leaders how to be leaders. And it got so overwhelming that I then said to the, you know, the, the big bosses, you need a role across the business that coaches and mentors and trains people. And that's what I did. I basically did it again. I wrote a job description. I took a PowerPoint to the senior leader called Christina. Um, did, did, I'm sorry, we can't say her surname, but she's amazing leader at Sky. And I said, I've, I've got a proposition. I would like to create a role that transforms all the leaders, how to give great feedback, how to develop their, their team and coach them. And she was like, yeah, let's do it. Three months later, wow. I became transformation manager across the, the business. Amazing. So when was it? So how, how long have you been doing that role? So that is like- So now it's two years now. Two years, okay, gotcha. that. Oh, that's and what I meant. So two years in the existing role, not two years yeah. at Sky Media, two years yeah. in the existing role. So you've so you pretty much written your own paycheck, essentially, written your own job description. Yeah, you're you're living out that role every day. Yeah, so, so I had to get buy in and and you know get testimonials from people and just say like why, and what I'm constantly doing is every time I do something and someone says that was great, I I, I get them to send me a testimonial, so leaders can see that people are enjoying what I'm doing. So you know, yeah, definitely, definitely wonderful stuff, wonderful stuff, and that's obviously working as you mentioned to get the testimonials and so forth, and I mean Sky on shrinking they're growing and growing as a business so uh, and so how much of it is actually that leadership uh coaching what percentage of the role is from a leadership coaching perspective would you say it's a lot um so really? as well as the wow. leadership coaching i do um this other workshop called high performing teams workshop so that's my premises like my reputation is Russian builds high performing teams so i do this other workshop called high performing teams but a lot of it i think as well it's just you know sky media is so big and there's lots of turnover of staff and it, just like me when i was the manager back in the day no one teaches you how to be a manager they're just like you're now a manager so it's always evolving like you know the training mm. the, the the topics i ask people what do you want to know one minute it might be can we have a training on how to have a difficult conversation can i have training on how to give feedback so i ask people what do they want next month and then i build it right gotcha all right fantastic and you get involved in delivering that as well do you kind of also bring yeah. external people as well depending on what yeah if i can like there's an amazing lady called sue grovner because if it's about recruitment training and stuff like that i'm not an expert in that i'll bring people in um right. 
but the things I'm good at, I will roll out. But if I'm not, if that's not me, then I will like NABS is a great place for training, you know, nabs.co.uk. Right. They do great media training on like confidence building, um, you know, mental health training, you know. So right. like I, I signpost people as well because I'm like, I know I'm not the expert on this, but I know where you can go for that. Yeah, yeah, sure, definitely. If it ain't your remit then or your expert area of expertise, then you know, you, you bring you bring some bring the right person in that can that can develop that. Fantastic. So are you enjoying your time there? Um, living your best life as it works. I mean, because you are, um, I know individuals who work at Sky who talk very, very highly of you. I mean, you've got Tony at the Beckham, there's Calvin, etc. cetera, uh, who also speaks really, really highly of you. Um, Thank you. Um, so, so in terms of um, one-to-one mentoring, career development coaching, is is that your bag and you, you want to kind of develop that further? I mean, um, So that, uh, the, the mentoring is just stuff I love doing. I love sort of taking someone in a team and just seeing like, where do you want to be in six months? Let me help you get there. So Calvin, mm. who, you know, he's what the, one of the people I mentor, you know, That's he's sort of like, you know, rest, you know, I've been here, like it's been, it's time to move on. Where can I go? So I just help people find what they want to do. Cause like us, you know, we didn't want to be a media back in the day. You, you sort of sure. end up somewhere and, and how do you get the most it. of it? Sure. Um, and, and Tolu, who you mentioned, he's my mentor at Sky. So That's he's really been amazing. Idea. Yeah, you know, he's he's the one who got me involved in lots of the diversity and inclusion stuff. Because he sort of said, like, Resham, you know, you really inspire people. I don't think you realise it. Like, why don't you join our network and, and, you know, use us to amplify, like, stories and conversations and yeah. inspirational things. So Tolu's been my my um, champion at Sky. Superb. I've got a lot of prize because he's that sort of guy. I reached out to him after seeing him speak at, at an event. And uh, we've become pretty close. He's a fantastic individual, really, really top class bloke. So um, that's Tony Adebekan for anyone listening or watching uh, to kind of follow him on LinkedIn and check him out. So, so you, you mentioned about about the the, the DNI piece, uh, getting involved in that. So obviously George Floyd coming up three years in the next week or two, um, and there was a massive shift. Everybody was jumping up and down. Um, from a DNI perspective, from a racial perspective, when that occurred, when he when he died, unfortunately. Um, but the upside of that is that people started to, to do something. And w- what's your perception of what Sky's actions were around that time in terms of DNI and actually doing some, making some actual changes? Um, mm. Did they recognise it? Were they slow to the? Was it? I'm, I'm making the assumption there's probably some stuff going on prior to George Floyd's death, but. But did that accelerate it and was it was it a positive do you you know have you seen some good change yeah so definitely accelerated it i think a lot across a lot of businesses that george Floyd event accelerated change across everywhere mm-hmm. you know it sort of amplified you know that there was a need to sort of drive diversity so i think sky've got like a, a target of like by 2025 you know 25 percent diversity you know five percent of that needs to be black um and I think it's it's great for them. But I think when the George Floyd incident happened, I was working there and they were not happy with how things were communicated or how the senior leaders of Sky handled it, you know. But, you know, what Sky... Way, in, terms of, like, in terms of how they handled rolling something out, you mean, or how they reacted It's to... how they addressed what was happening in the news. Like, they, they it wasn't empathetic enough. So I think a lot of... There was a big uproar um and you know kudos to the leaders they actually apologized and said look we got it wrong we just it's a bit like that thing where um so because they don't say anything people feel like they're not being listened to or they don't care whereas mm. what i'm trying to say to and, and there's a great dni team in sky and you know they they have this thing about like you know having an ally in every room how do you you know because i've worked with lots of senior white men middle class you know Mm-hmm. Um, background and that's why I do the talks you know Tolu says to me to do these talks because he was like Resh when you were growing, going up the career ladder in your 20s there was no one like you there was no woman there was no brown face in that room but how did yeah. you get to where you are without that so that's why I love to mentor the 20 year olds because it's like I know it's you can't be what you can't see but then how did Resham do it if I can yeah, teach yeah, you what yeah. I did it's funny as well if I can say something sit my head out above the parapet and say especially young Asian women typically very meek um, in terms of from a religious point of view, family sort of heritage that they don't speak out as much um, and aren't given the confidence within their family groups to speak out much. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's how what I see 
and um, I could be wrong, but I know from my friends that I've seen that the sisters have been really, really quiet. And um, so, yeah, you're the you're the flip side of that. To get them yeah. the confidence to, to do that, do you know what I mean? Because to change the narrative and change that perception, um, to give them that confidence and to say, look, you know, you can be a voice, do you know what I mean? And because you weren't a voice, you said you you weren't very confident when you were younger. And so I think it's really, really inspirational being the powerhouse as you are to show younger Asian women or just any young younger person that yeah. you can become a leader, you can inspire and empower, empower people. Because I mean, but it's definitely, definitely rare for a young Asian woman to, to, to take that role. So it's... Um, Thank so you, it's, yeah. It's, uh, it's, but it's, it's, it's first of many, I just want to inspire so many people that there's a, there's a lot more people that look like me, you know, around the table. Yeah, know? definitely, definitely. Um, I've, seen and more, I've seen a few more. Because obviously, we're both in MEFA. And yeah. there's a few, um, you know, individuals, uh, um, Asian women are there that are really good, sort of like, speakers etc are doing significantly well in the world of media as well and that are moving forwards and winning awards and getting recognition which is fantastic because i know that when i was you know 15 20 years ago that wasn't the case there wasn't many individuals that you could say okay well she is from asian background it's, it was that meek quiet persona so now kicking the doors off and pushing forward is you know it's, it's for all to see and it's definitely empowering for other people so so all thank you fantastic fantastic so what's, what's next then? So you know you're, you're at Sky, you're doing well. You're coaching leaders, which is amazing. Um, so is what what do you see as being around the corner for you? Um, so what's next? So this year, I think I I think 2022, I felt like I'd hit my ceiling where I'm at now. I wasn't sure what I want to do, and that's when Tolu said to me, "Look, Resh, you know you inspire people in Sky Media. Why don't you create a podcast and everything you learn, scale it, and you know let people learn what you do and how you can help people?" So I was like, "Oh, I don't know." So right now. Stretching Myself is my podcast. I'm meeting yeah. lots of amazing people. Um, and also, for people listening, if you ever don't know what you want to do, go to nabs, nabs.co.uk. They do career coaching. And something they said to me was, look, you you enjoy it at Sky Media. It doesn't mean you always have to leave. Why don't you do some industry work? And that's mm. when I, you know, MEFA, M-E-F-A, you know, Media for yeah. All, they approached me, Nikki. She approached yeah. me and yeah. said, we really love your LinkedIn post. You talk about mentoring and like we'd love you to join our group and that's how I met you Ian and I think yeah. there's just so many like-minded people wanting to Definitely. do good it's in the media industry group. it's really really good especially over the last few months it's really kind of like um gathered momentum and it seems to be getting a lot more um uh, interaction from members doing stuff do you know what I mean so it's really really good really really good definitely like, so that's kind of like part of you want to kind of carry on, you want to kind of grow. That yeah, area. I want to definitely like do what I'm doing at Sky, but how can I scale it outside of Sky and get to know more people and also learn from pe people in other organisations? Like, is there anything we can, Sky can learn from you? So, you know, just meeting lots of people um, from MIFA, I think it's been so amazing. So that's why I sort of say to people, sometimes you don't have to always leave somewhere to stretch or grow. You can always stay where you are, but build these little sort of, you know, arms of other yeah. people so sky media so my work is really like my podcast is just keeping me going i think and sky media have been amazing because it's under well-being they send it out in their monthly mental health newsletter Russian, listen to Russian's podcast so my you know my team at sky have just been really amazing at amplifying what i'm doing as well so giving you that support fantastic super stuff brilliant okay brilliant so Russian is your mother um of teenager and a nine-year-old boy is that right is that correct yeah right. yeah so busy lady outside of work right yeah very busy apart like? from the apart from the school runs it's all about dropping dylan to his sports club dropping Shree, being a taxi so she can go out with her mates to the cinema you know yeah that's, that's why like when they're with their dad on a on the weekend it's like mum what did you do i'm like oh i just went to record a podcast in the studio or went to meet a mate so my my time is all about connecting i'm, I'm a very family oriented person love going to see my mum and dad my family my cousins i'm also a bit of like like my house is the party house so like I like to get all everyone over you know our family is very traditional very you know back in the day we don't we're massive families everyone brings a dish brings yeah, it over you know superb. love it love it so Fantastic. yeah it's just all about enjoying life really yeah superb no, I love that from making you know come on bringing the uh chorus and all that sort of stuff over and you know what I mean I oh, love love I love food anyway do you know what I mean whether it's Indian or Caribbean food or English food it's just absolutely superb so the kids are keeping you on your toes, similar to me. I've got a 15-year-old daughter, 16 nearly. She's 16 in September. So me and my missus, yeah, 100%, we're, we're on it as well in terms of running her around. My son's older now, he's 19 and driving, so he's helped out a little bit, taking a bit of the burden off us. But I know 
exactly what, what you're talking about. Exactly what you're talking about. It's fantastic. Well, brilliant. Well, look, it's been coming towards the end. I'm just kind of conscious of time. Um, what I want to say is, you know, look, we've got a growing audience of listeners and viewers, Digital Hub. And um, so now, being the inspirational person that you are, is there anything that you want to say um, to our growing audience of listeners and viewers? And, you know, this is a chance to do it. So please, please go away. Please um, yeah. take the floor. So the floor. what I'd like to say, especially being, if, you know, don't use your background as like your ceiling. Like, because I'm quiet, I am i can't be a leader or mm. because um, I'm told not to speak up, I can't transform a business. You know, I'm in, an introvert and I talk openly that I'm an introvert. But if you give me a topic I'm passionate about, I thrive. So if you are an introvert or a quiet person, find something you love to talk about and use Absolutely. that to present. And that's when you come to life. So if you saw me in a boardroom, I'd still be the quiet person. But when you give me that moment to say my piece, that's when I come alive. But I'm not that you know the the talker but I, I that's why I, love, I want people to, to understand that don't worry about your background or you know your gender um you can also be where I am with the you know the background you've had or the upbringing you've had so don't think if you're an introvert you can't be something mm. or you know if you're South Asian you can't be something or I mentor lots of black Asian and white people and they all have the same insecurities mm. Mm. yeah definitely without a doubt I mean believe it or not I am kind of quite introverted and um, but as you said when I'm talking about something that I'm passionate, uh, passionate about or interested in, then I can definitely kind of come to life, you know, so uh, that's superb. Rush, I just want to say thank you so much, Rush, it was great. This is part thank one you for of having me. Of many, many more episodes. So I want to say thank you for coming on the Digital Harvest. It's been great, fantastic experience. And um, yeah, until next time, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for all the support. If you like the content you're hearing in our episodes of Digital Hub, hit subscribe below. Thank you very much.